She's an Olympic gold medalist, a world champion, and celebrity dancer. But Sean Johnson wants more from her sport, with the London Olympics just one year away. Chelsea Memel has felt the pull of Olympic dreams, a silver in Beijing, and a world title all her own. She, too, returns to the gym with a need to accomplish something more. And one year ago in this very building, the same competition, Alisa Sacramoni began her own comeback, fueled by a need for redemption and for an Olympics with no regrets. These Olympic veterans carrying their new dreams have come to Chicago, Illinois, a city that once had aspirations all its own to host the Olympic Games. Sports fans in Chicago know all about potential glory and enduring heartbreak, following the Cubs, the Sox, the Bulls, and the Bears of professional sports. Universal Sports is proud to present the CoverGirl Classic, the final qualifying step to the national championships, and the beginning of an important year of gymnastics performances and decisions. Without question, it's a big step for this young lady. Sean Johnson has not competed since dismounting the beam in Beijing, winning her gold medal. That was almost three years ago. Since then, Sean has remained in the spotlight, winning a title on the dance floor with her partner, Mark Ballas, for Dancing with the Stars. A dancing trophy, nice, but Sean needed more, and the fire to compete in gymnastics has not gone out. It has been 1,068 days since that balance beam performance in Beijing. L last year, a torn ACL from a skiing accident actually triggered thoughts of a return to gymnastics. And just this past February, Sean rejoined, rejoined Team USA's national gymnastics team. And there she is, Sean Johnson. She will be competing first off on the uneven bars. We'll only do two events in this competition. Hello, everybody. I am Tim Daggett, joined today with Olympic gold medalist Amanda Borden. And, you know, Amanda, we talked with Sean, and amazingly, after all she has been through, she says she's nervous. Well, she told us she's nervous because she knows she used to have it, but the question is, does she still have it? And as we know, Tim, it's no easy feat to make a comeback at this level, on top of the fact that there is added press pressure when you're Sean Johnson. Without question, there is no doubt. It's remarkable just to see her. She looks great and is ready to really go. But that face, I tell you, she is as stoic and as focused as ever. Another young lady who already has started her comeback. She did it, like we said, last year. Alicia Sacramoni, her Olympics, not at all what she wants to remember, actually. Actually turned out quite bad. She fell on the last two events, balance beam and floor exercise, in the team finals of the 2008 Olympic Games. A little redemption, though. She went to the World Championships and brought home a world title on vault. Also, another face from Beijing, Chelsea Memel. And I'll tell you, if there is a gymnast that has been more unlucky than Chelsea Memo when it comes to the Olympic Games, I don't know who that is. That's right. Injuries, you know, really helped her not have the Olympic experience she wanted. But this is the first competition back. And I'll tell you what, she's nervous, but her skills are there. And she is one of the most fierce competitors I've ever seen. However, starting on the balance beam, not an easy place to be first time back in competition. And in her first senior competition, for the USA, this is Jordan Weber, and if there is someone out there that can challenge the very best in the world, my pick, all eyes on this young lady right here, Jordan Weber. Just earlier this year, American Cup champion, defeating the world all-around holder. We'll be back in Chicago with competition when we return. The 2011 CoverGirl Classic is brought to you by Subway Restaurants, the new Subway $3 flatbread breakfast combo, a six-inch flatbread sandwich, and a cup of coffee. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. And we are back at the CoverGirl Classic at the UIC Pavilion, and you are looking at Mackenzie Coquato from just a stone's throw down the road, Naperville, Illinois. 
was a member of the 2010 silver team medal for USA. Also a member of the University of Florida gymnastics team this year. She just completed her freshman season. Not too often you see collegiate athletes come back to the elite scene. Especially in their freshman year. Sometimes when they are done, they're through, they, they get back into the elite career. But her coach told me, you'll see that right ankle, you see it right there, heavily taped. She tore three ligaments in her ankle just weeks before the NCAAs and still was able to represent Florida on four of the events. Solid start, nice connection there. Tim, I hated starting on this event because this is the one event that adrenaline does not help. You want to stay calm, cool, and collected. Well, it actually probably hurts a little bit, right? <laughs> Now, many of the gymnasts that we see, most of them actually, will not be competing on all four events. It's not a requirement here. Mackenzie's goal, along with many others, to earn a spot for the World Championships in Japan later on this year. And she hopes to do that with solid performances on beam, but mostly we'll see her a little bit later on, the uneven bars. That will punch her ticket for the 2011 World Championships. It's been a very solid routine, a great way to start the competition. She's got the dismount right here. Round off double full, a pretty easy dismount. Not concerned about that landing, but she has to be very excited about that performance. Yeah, her coaches, Wu Jani and Li Yuejo. There you see them right there. There is Wu Jani and one of her teammates right there, Anna Li. And there's coach. Li Yuejo, one of the greats of all time, a former world champion on floor exercise. He actually was called to China a year before the Olympic Games and helped with Team China in their preparation for those Beijing Games. Up next will be Jordan Weber on the beam. And as we said, she is just an outrageous talent. Catherine Gettard, one of her coaches, giving a last few seconds, waiting patiently. Got a penny for your thoughts, I'll tell you. Sean Johnson. You know, and where she's starting, the uneven bars, is really the event where Sean is, is probably the least comfortable of any of her events. It's, it's a good, solid event. She did it in the team finals in Beijing, China, but it is not, it is not what put her face out to the world. She's a power gymnast, floor exercise and vaulting. Mackenzie Cocado a 14.1 on the balance beam. A very good score. She had a built-in deduction because you see the difficulty value, that 5.2, it would have been a little bit higher. Her dismount, not difficult enough. But if you're talking about difficult, hold your breath. <laughs> because right here, this is just a stacked balance beam routine. And when you think they can't add any more, they add something else. Very important connection right there. Beautiful. Tim, she's put two upgrades in this routine. And watching her in practice, one of those upgrades coming right here adding a half turn on the switch side, something she's actually struggled a little bit with. Oh, that was the side summy. She struggled with it in practice. So this will be a great mental test. Very difficult. Perfect. Sometimes these leaps, they don't look as hard, but oftentimes more difficult than the acrobatic elements. 
Now this is huge right here. Watch this. She's going to do a backflip with a full twist and then keep going. Had to break the connection there. That was supposed to be done together, but cost her a little bit, but nothing big. She will only do balance beam and uneven bars today. Wow. But she's going to do it like that. That is a fantastic start for Jordan Weber. That one mistake on the connection for the standing fold to the back handspring, but I'll tell you what, with all of those skills in there, it doesn't get much better than that. Beautiful landing on the dismount. And we have a lot of gymnasts in the building today, and they are all looking at one thing, exactly what you're looking at. Sean Johnson on the uneven bars. Remember, basically three years since she has put a leotard on and gone out onto the competition floor. Tim, she mentioned that she doesn't have all of her difficulty in her routines right there at Ginger. Another release right here. Well, if there was one thing that Sean truly excelled at was her mental ability. She is about as tough a customer as they come. She said, I hope I still have that. Oh, no! Oh. Well, Tim, you know, it looked like she had it. She, she just did. was stiff legged on that landing. She needed to stay down on it. But you have to wonder, those are the kind of mistakes when you haven't been out in the competition that you make. The in inconsistent landing, doubting yourself a little bit. Yeah, this dismount actually very good. She does, very difficult, does a double layout with a full twist and just doesn't bend ah. those knees enough. And that, of course, score-wise, is going to be close to devastating, but actually a great start, in my opinion, for Sean Johnson here in Chicago. And Sean Johnson, there you see her score at 13.55. Look at the execution, 8.05. That is almost two points off. An entire point of that came right at the end when she put her hands down on the dismount. But I tell you, she came out like a fighter, and she didn't look like she was too nervous to me. Well, obviously never happy with the fall, but a great start for Sean. And now we move to Allie Raceman, who in her first year as a senior had just a rock'em sock'em year. A breakout year, was second at the American Cup, third at the Visa Championships, the Nationals. Teammate to Alicia Sacramoni and oh, barely wow. got her. Oh, and there's, this is a huge, huge error. This is not Allie's best event. It's where she struggles and a little bit of a mental break and had to take some extra swings. I watched her in practice a few times struggle with that element. So you know if a little bit of doubt is in the head, and you can see throughout this whole bar routine, she's just not hitting those lines confidently. And this is another. Wow. Wow. And this is a catastrophe right here. And every time she swings back and forth, those are deductions upon deductions. The dismount, but at that point, a very uncharacteristic, nervy start from Allie Raceman. I remember being the athlete thinking, how did that just happen? You train, you train, and that's exactly what you don't want to happen in this situation. Coach Mihai Breschen having very few words for Allie. Our next competitor, Michaela Maroney, a very beautiful young lady. Gymnastics-wise, has an elegant body, beautiful knees and toes. Just a joy to watch. A little bit beat up here. Has had a bit of a back problem. Will also not be doing the all-around. First she was in all, then <laughs> only going to do two back in all. And now we are, I think we're settled <laughs> at just two, the balance beam and I believe floor exercise. There are some athletes here having to qualify to the visa. She obviously has already qualified, so 
really just getting some experience under her belt, preparing for that competition as well. So let's see if Michaela can shake these jitters that everybody seems to be having at this point. Allie oh. Raceman's score, oh, a 12.45. That's a disaster. Another solid combination. You'll see a lot of the athletes connecting skills. Obviously helps towards their start value. Small balance check. Oh, and another one right there. Went a little bit past on that turn. Her tumbling skills are flawless. The errors are happening on the dance elements, which you mentioned sometimes are the hardest skills we actually have to do as athletes on this event. Something as simple as the full turn. Double tuck, little over-rotated there, big step back. But actually a good start. You know, it's her first year as a senior competitor as she gets a hug from her coach, Arthur Okopian, also Marina. And here we go, our first look at Gabriel Douglas, who is Sean Johnson's teammate and training partner. And, you know, she, her mom still lives in Virginia Beach. She has relocated to Iowa. Her dad, on his third tour, actually has done two in Iraq and is presently in Afghanistan. She hopes to talk to him at the end of the competition via Skype tonight. Hope that goes through. Look at the amplitude on that. She's strong, quick, powerful. This is the only event she's doing, but you can see with the height of these elements, how dynamic she is as an athlete. And you know, the coordinator, Marta Caroli, who makes all the decisions, really likes her, and that's a really good thing, and that was a really good routine. All right, well, if you're only gonna do one event, that's the way to get the job done. Beautiful lines, great amplitude, and of course, a perfect landing. A hug from Chow, Sean Johnson's coach. And you know, he says she has everything, every quality, strength, flexibility, power. He just says, I don't know about the focus and the mental game, but she was rock solid right there. Full twisting double. Great start for her. And here, one of our Olympic veterans, Chelsea Memel, came home from Beijing with a silver medal, and that would satisfy just about anybody in the world, but not Chelsea Memel. She has had a very rocky and unlucky Olympic road. Was a world champion on the uneven bars in 2003 at 15 years old. Injured her ankle the year of the Olympic Games and did not make that team to 2004. And then in 2008, just days before the competition began in Beijing, China, injured an ankle again and was only capable of doing one event, the uneven bars for Team USA. Huge skill right there, very difficult. Punch front half, more height and more amplitude and more consistency actually than we've seen in the past on that particular skill. Big skill here, an Arabian. Oh. And able to hang on. Tim, Chelsea's an athlete that does have a lot of experience, but one thing she described in this comeback is that she's smarter. She has a whole different plan, trains very differently. And I think when you get to this age, that's the kind of athlete you have to be. And Beautiful connection there. Jam-packed. If there was a surprise, 
at these championships so far. It was watching Chelsea Memel and see how prepared she was. We've said over and over again, we're only gonna see athletes on an event here or there. Chelsea Memel in her first meet back since Beijing, gonna do all four. Solid start. She mentioned she hadn't been to the training camp, so when coming here, she wasn't sure if she still was meant to be here. And after the first day of practice, she kind of felt like, okay, I'm back in my groove and I belong here. A and hug. that routine definitely belonged. A hug and a kiss from not only her coach, but her dad, Andy Memel. And I'll tell you, on this skill here, an Arabian, just watch the toes. Wow. They figure out a way and she is just latched on there. <laughs> Looked like a falcon. <laughs> oh, boy. Gabrielle Douglas, a 14.95. They were a little tougher. You see that 855 execution score. I think that was a little tough. She has a very high start score of 6.4. I believe only a couple gymnasts have a little bit higher, only a tenth higher in this competition. But what a way to start for Chelsea Memel. And, you know, her comeback has been contrasted so much by Sean Johnson. She didn't hold a press conference, didn't make an announcement, hasn't been going to the camps. She said, I don't need any of that. All I need is to be in the gym and to get the training done. And there's no question she has done that. After talking to Chelsea and even Alicia, you know, they have a new sense of appreciation for themselves as athletes as well as the sport and really what it takes. I think a little bit different training plan because they both feel smarter about what they personally need. Waiting her turn is Alicia Sacramoni. As we take a look at Rebecca Bross, the current all-around champion for the USA, she will not be competing, was injured at the World Championships, had surgery on her ankle and just not ready to get it done here. She has scratched all four events, was only planning on doing a couple, then came here, said she would do the uneven bars, but really in training has just not looked anything like herself. You know, Tim, my heart hurt for her when I watched because I remember going through that myself as an athlete. When I was about 17, it was like my body wasn't connecting to my brain. But the good news for Rebecca, she's a fighter. And uh, there's no doubt she'll be back. Chelsea Memel, a 14.7, a good start on the balance beam. As we have already said, this is Sabrina Vega. Also, another one of those first year seniors. To be eligible to compete, you need that magic number. You need to be 16 in the year of the competition, and she has exactly that. Little hesitation on that connection. Sabrina, one of the few gymnasts that also will be doing the all-around, all four events. They will obviously post the all-around scores and an all-around all -around champion will be crowned, but at the CoverGirl Classic, it's really not about just that. It is the last spot where you can feel the competition floor before the all-important national championships. And a lot of the athletes describe this competition as almost a warm-up getting ready for the Visa Championships, and of course, the most important competition of this year, the World Championships. Wow. Oh boy. Wobble there, that's a difficult skill, a switch ring. Anytime you take your eyes off of the beam into a big arena like that, it's very hard to gain your focus. So if, for any reason, you're not dead center on that beam. That's exactly what happens. Gets that to her feet. A little bit of a struggle. But once again, she's done with balance beam, and that always brings a sigh of relief. <laughs> not a tough 
not an easy place to start, but once it's over, it's a great feeling. Getting some last pointers from her coach, Soren Sapoy. And there is Sean Johnson. Remember, we will see her one more time on the balance beam when we continue. It was 15 years ago to this very day that the Magnificent Seven went to Atlanta, Georgia and brought home an Olympic gold medal for Team USA. 1996, the Olympic Games here. One of the stars, of course, from that team, Amanda Borden. And I'll tell you, the party got started in that Georgia Dome, but it continued all over the country for a year and a half. They toured 99 different venues across America. Hello, everybody. I am Tim Daggett, and I'm joined with gold medalist Amanda Borden. And it has been 15 years, as we said. Can you believe it's that long? And happy anniversary. Thank you very much. And I cannot believe it's been 15 years because it seems like it was yesterday. But the bad news is that means we're both 15 years older. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> the good news, those memories get sweeter and sweeter. And to be honest with you, it amazes me every day that that memory is not just special to us as athletes, but to our coaches and the sport of gymnastics. And you know, the funny thing is all the veterans that are out on the floor that already have had an Olympic experience, they are chasing exactly what you already have, that gold medal. Well, every athlete dreams of their Olympic experience. Some of, for some, it is gold. However, as an elite athlete, it's hard to stop pursuing that dream. And although they've been there, and for some of them, it was a good, if not great, experience, they all want more. There's no question about that, you know, but today, so far, Amanda, we have seen a lot of jitters, a lot of nerves. What's going on out there? Well, you know, it's a lot of pressure to make a comeback. I remember just this competition being very difficult for me because it was the beginning of the season. You're not quite in peak competition shape, and even Marta says she doesn't want the athletes there. So a lot of pressure coming back. For this young lady in particular, everybody's wondering, can she do it again? So it's tough to get back into that position, but also to feel that pressure. And to be honest with you, I'm very impressed with all three of them because, like I mentioned, it is not an easy feat to do. Take a look at the standings on top, as expected. Jordan Weber, Gabby Douglas right behind. But remember, she will not do the all-around, as will very few of these gymnasts. Chelsea Memel, you see her there. Vega in seventh, and Mackenzie Coquato back in eighth position. And we have seen Mackenzie. Now we get to see the other part of the family. Also, once again, from right down the road, they have a very large contingent of gymnasts. This is Bridget Coquato. Very close to that out of bounds there. Look like her legs just buckled. Oh boy. Good landing, and then the knees just went out from under her. And she takes those couple of steps, which are deductions, and then she sits down, which is a 
full point. He looks, steps a little gingerly after that floor exercise routine. Her coaches say she also a little bit dinged up. You see the first score for Sean Johnson. Remember 13, 5-5 five, five. if she had just bent those knees a little bit on that landing, that number would have been one point higher. You know, as I said, the uneven bar is really not one of Sean's strengths. Here on balance beam, this is where everything worked exactly as planned in Beijing, China. It was the last event of, for Sean Johnson in the individual events, and she brought home the gold on the balance beam. This is her final competitive event this evening. You know, it's funny. She said that after 2008, she was absolutely sure that she was done. You see that left knee tape. She was on a skiing vacation and fell. The binding did not release, and she tore her ACL. And she said almost instantly she was just blown away that maybe she can't do gymnastics anymore. She said that was the catalyst to getting back into the gym. Big skill. Oh, jeez. Very, very uncharacteristic fall right there. And yeah, and the Sean Johnson we know, she, she probably doesn't even know what to feel when she makes a mistake because that is something that never happens to her in competition. But, you know, the good news is the skills are there. It just, maybe not quite enough time under her belt to make them consistent. She was talking. Oh, no. Once again, pretty big balance check. She was talking just last week that she started freaking out, saying that, you know, I don't feel ready. Coach Chow, I just don't feel like it's time yet. And he said, you're never going to feel ready. And that's exactly it. That's, that's the Sean Johnson that's right there. Know. That's what we know. One thing that she told us, he reminded her, hey, it's not necessarily about the result of this competition. Don't worry about falls. Don't worry about mistakes. Let's just get back out there. Dismounting double pike. Easy dismount for her. Solid landing. You know, my opinion at this point, no question, Sean is going to go home. She's going to be disappointed. She's going to be angry. But my opinion that she still showed so much of the old Sean. She still has toughness. She just, she's not quite ready yet. You know, it's three years. And, you know, it, it hasn't just been three years off of competition. Three years of diving, living a completely different life, the celebrity lifestyle, traveling constantly, all types of appearances, speeches, endorsements. And the focus was so totally different from what it is now. But I didn't see anything from her in the lead up for the competition or in what she did today that makes me feel that this was a bad idea for her. I totally agree. And to be honest with you, although it's not a fun experience to have those kind of moments as an athlete, it's also beneficial. It's motivating to make sure that you work a little bit harder and become a little bit more focused. She knows exactly how to focus and get the job done. She strayed because of all of the great opportunities, but now it's time to buckle down and get back to that point. Take a look at Michaela Moroni, our next performer. Bridget Coquato a 12.3 on the floor exercise. Very disappointing score. Sean's beam score, a 13.5. year senior. Michaela was third in the all-around at last year's junior national championships. Oh. Out of bounds.
pounds, but that super difficult three and a half twist, one of a handful of gymnasts that performed that element in the entire world. When we talked about not being quite where they, these athletes need to be, it's those kind of mistakes that are gonna happen when you're just not quite prepared, out of bounds, over rotating, struggling with landings, maybe even a little endurance on this exercise. rotation on a double Arabian, a very difficult skill for a last pass. You have no space to be short on the landing. Like I said, she was on again, off again, whether she would do the all around. There's no question that she wasn't as prepared as she wanted to be. And this is our first look tonight, Alicia Sacramoni. She has already She's a year into her comeback, and it, what a comeback it has been. Started in this same arena last year at the CoverGirl Classic. She brought that comeback all the way to the World Championships where she won vault. We've seen a lot of nerves here, Amanda, on the balance beam. Every time I watch Alicia, I, I I actually want to get out there myself. She's so determined. You can see such a maturity in her gymnastics. She tumbles on the beam like it's the floor. Dead on. Great amplitude, a lot of height on all of her tumbling skills. And last year, Alicia only did two events, vaulting and balance beam. This year, she's added floor, which actually makes her, in my opinion, a lot more marketable for Team USA. And it'll be the first time competing floor since the 2008 Olympics. Pike front. Blind landing on this event, very difficult, but Alicia does many of them in this routine, and so far it's been all solid. Does a great dismount sequence here. Gigantic power. She's a rock. Beautiful. You know, it's ironic. She actually was really, in a lot of ways, the, the inspirational leader of Team USA 2007 when they won the team gold medal. She rallied the troops going into their last event and then it was Alicia who faltered at the Olympic Games, the last two events, balance beam and Florex. She looks like she has once again regained that confidence, though. I don't know what Mihai's talking about, but I thought it was pretty good. Chelsea Memel on the floor exercise. Her day began with a 14.7, a solid balance beam routine with lots of difficulty. We actually, actually saw her warm up a double layout. Don't believe she's gonna be doing that in this routine, but surprisingly, like you mentioned, she still has all of her big skills. where that double layout will go. 
hoping to bring that at the visas. Tim Chelsea's never been known for her artistry and choreography, but I have to say this is one of the best routines I've ever seen her have. Without any attention, any fanfare, this young lady, Chelsea Memel, has been back in the gym getting the job done. When we come back, we will have a special guest in the booth, the one and only Sean Johnson, when we return. You are looking at Allie Raceman. We'll get to her balance beam in just a moment. But before that, special guest in the booth, we have Sean Johnson with us. How would it feel out there, Sean? Uh, scary. Extremely scary. I forgot completely what competition was like. So. You know, you, you, did, you did have two falls. I did. Okay. But I'm looking at you and your gymnastics and your level and all that, and I didn't see anything <laughs> that didn't look like the old Sean Johnson, just the focus. You know, you had obviously those mistakes, but you looked just like Sean uh, almost all the time. Thank you. You know, I, I, I just don't have the numbers behind me. That's as simple as it is. And I've struggled with the knee and the comeback and trying to get back in shape. So I just don't have those numbers. And I was shaky, I was nervous. I, I doubted myself, which isn't normal, but that's normal for a first competition back. It's almost been three years. so. I'm giving myself a little slack. Well, and you have to be proud just to get back out here. I know that was part of your goal with this competition, just to get back out in this environment. Definitely. You know, just to be back, I'm so excited, and I have I feel like I've just shaken off the nerves for pieces. So let's take a look at Allie Raceman together, and you can go ahead and feel free to comment if you would like, Sean. You had <laughs> okay. some nerves today, too. Did I think everybody does. It's the first meet back. You know, they've trained all year for this after last year's Worlds, and they're just, everybody's getting the, the getting the rust out. Yeah. She, she didn't just have a bobble, though. She kind of had a little bit of a, a meltdown on the end of bars. I don't know if you saw that. I saw a little bit, but, you know, it's just, like I said, it's that first meet. It's the doubt. You have to earn that confidence back in yourself. And, and then coming mistake. to this event, leaving that doubt from the other event is yeah. one of the hardest <laughs> things any athlete has to do. Exactly. Definitely. I mean, I fell on the last scale of my bar routine and then fell on the first scale of my B routine. So, clear indication of that. Always brings up the mental aspect of gymnastics. Oh, yes. She looks good so far. <laughs> Slight hesitation on that connection. You know, in a lot of ways, though, Sean, she has some of your qualities. She is a quiet competitor and has been just a rock, but a little bit of bobbles here and there on balance beam as well. What really put her name out to the world was just being able to deal with pr tremendous pressure for the first time. She's a strong competitor. She well, intimidates me. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to do a big dismount here. We'll see. Arabian double front. Nice. nice. Handles it well, yeah. Those blind landings are very difficult, Tim. You have no idea when the ground's coming, so it takes numbers to make sure that you can stay on your feet. And at the end of the beam routine. <laughs> <laughs> and a little endurance. Gets a little congratulations from Mihai Breschin. And we'll get ready to go over to the floor exercise and take a look at Sabrina Vega. Sean, what do you do between now and the Visa Championships, though? What? Uh... Um, well, it was only about a week ago that I've really put together my, my routine, so. I feel like that's where I'm lacking in the numbers that I was talking about. So from here to now, it's just about getting those numbers in and getting the confidence up.
did not see if a white flag went out, but that foot definitely touched white. Which will be a tenth of a point. routine from Sabrina. Casey Joe McGee. She is one of the oldest competitors here, 23 years old, already done. A year past her NCAA eligibility from the University of Arkansas. Just thought she could contribute to Team USA and bring a little bit of leadership quality. She has some of the most interesting elements. That was really cool. <laughs> on balance beam. Well, I mentioned earlier that a lot of athletes are more comfortable tumbling on this event, surprisingly, <laughs> than dancing, but not this young lady. Watch this. But unbelievable. Oh. Combination there. Very Beautiful. Tr very tricky. I remember hating the full turn, <laughs> yeah. let alone. Now, now they're connecting it to another one. <laughs> and she is not done with these dance elements. One thing I think the collegiate gymnasts gain is confidence after competing for a team weekend after weekend. All that oh pressure. Oh, oh. No. Wow. <laughs> Good fight. Somehow finds a way to stay on, but a lot of damage done there. Another Watch. very difficult turn right here. Triple. He turns around, falls out of it. Wow. Uh, I can't remember seeing anybody do that since Betty Aquino. That's going back. <laughs> Sabrina Britt Vega of 14.25 on the floor exercise. It's a good start for the first time back in the elite world. Beautiful mount sequence though and very different. Let's take another look at the mount. Round off layout, step out. Very difficult mounting from the board onto that four inches. And of course a little creativity. Triple turn, you can see how perfect you have to be right there. Well, Sean, thank you very much for coming up and joining us. Like I said, I think you look great. Thank you. Overall, positive experience? Definitely. I. It's like a drug. I'm going to be back. <laughs> I love it. So. All righty. Well, good luck. A very big year once again coming up for Sean Johnson. Thank you very much, Sean. When we come back, more gymnastics from the University of Illinois, Chicago. One person that has shown absolutely no nerves here this evening, Alicia Sacramoni. We will be seeing her on floor exercise. And I tell you, it's the thing that I've been waiting for most at this competition. She debuted a new floor routine, actually hasn't competed since Beijing on this event. New music, powerful, elegant, just a tremendous combination 
that she's got with this exercise. It's it's really it's really going to be a standout routine for her, not just here, but you on the world stage, I'll tell you. Her confidence, when we talked to her, she kind of giggled and said, I need to get back out there and do a floor routine because I don't even know if I know how to do that in competition. <laughs> here are our standings at the top of the leaderboard, Mackenzie Warford. Remember, a lot of the gymnasts not doing the all-around. These obviously have. Michaela Maroney in fourth place, though. She will drop down because that she is done for the day. You see Vega Memel right there. Great start on the balance beam. And this is a big moment for Alicia Sacramone. struggles with the landings, Tim, but I have to say that's the first floor team that has really drawn me in. Great music, great choreography. Not bad for a three-year hiatus <laughs> on this event. <laughs> Moving to the vault. Bridget Coquato had a little bit of a meltdown on her last event, the floor exercise. Younger sister of Mackenzie, world team member. Just a very easy vault. Laid out, full twisting Yurchenko. Great body alignment, of course, a solid landing. Definitely an area that she'll want to work on, upgrade that vault. And she's capable of doing much more, I think. You know, a little bit of struggle on the balance beam and then really that tough floor exercise. I think that played into making the decision a little bit easier for her and her coaches. But Alicia, a fantastic job. And you saw her running over there. And well, well, what's she running for? Well, of course, she is the teammate and the elder statesman at her gym. She wanted to get over there to be in position to cheer on Allie Raceman. She calls her her mini me. <laughs> I don't know if Allie likes that. You know, that's. Great to have a teammate. I personally trained with JC Phelps, and you know, we always say we don't think we would have made it without each other. You constantly push each other, you pick each other up when you're having a bad day. And of course, Alicia, you know, being there after Ali started very rough in this competition on the bars, helping her regain confidence and finish this competition out. You know, I talked with her coach, Mihai, this morning. And uh, he was a little frustrated, to be honest, because he said, nobody's doing anything. Everybody's doing one or two events. Alicia's adding an event, and Allie's doing all four. He said, you know, it's kind of really not fair. Score for Sacramone at 13.9. On the floor exercise, had a lot of those steps and out of bounds. Floor, one of the strictest events for evaluation.
new music, new routine for Ali Raceman as well. Wow. Deduction there on the out of bounds, but huge pass, double front, blind landing, immediate punch front. Big, huge power. She says she loves the music. People can clap to it. And it also, she says, it energizes her. I can see why. I always preferred music that got the crowd going with me as well, just in case you needed a little extra help. So far, she doesn't need any help. Raceman, a powerhouse. New routine there. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Yeah, that's what happened. So new, she forgot something. <laughs> Very cute. As you said, though, Amanda, amazing tumbling as we move over to the vault and our third look at Chelsea Memel. Now, I don't expect Chelsea to do a very difficult ball. We just saw Bridget Coquato do a full twisting laid out Yurchenko. That has a maximum score of a 15.0. I believe we'll see the same thing here from Chelsea. Bridget scored a 14.2. And it is the same. You can see a lot more height and distance on that vault, but that's a smart decision. We all know she can do a much bigger, better vault at this point in competition, getting back that's very smart and safe choice. I have to tell you, she looks absolutely like she has not missed a beat at all. You know, and her comeback hasn't been all that smooth as well. In 2009, she toyed with the idea and was training, and it just didn't work out for her, she said. She needed that break. Well, and her dad, who also was her coach, used a, a technique to motivate her, to really put that accountability on her. It's Amanda Jetter from Cincinnati Gymnastics. Amanda, you ever heard of that? <laughs> yes, I obviously love coming to these competitions and sharing moments and watching my personal coach, Mary Lee Tracy, still doing it. Allie Raceman, a big floor exercise score, short on that landing. She wanted to complete the full. You could see it was a little bit like three quarters and then squeaked it around. Very difficult Arabian. Amanda actually second at the CoverGirl Classic last year in this building. Went to the national championships and right before the meet took a very bad fall and had to pull out of the Visa Championships, the Nationals. She's only competing bars and beam at this competition also. You can see that ankle wrapped. the ankle, dismounting, double tuck, hold it around, solid landing. And this is what brings back memories, walking off and hugging this lady, knowing <laughs> how proud she is that you stay on that event. 
Mary Lee Tracy on the floor during the Olympic Games. Hey, I, I heard you say something to Mary Lee about the anniversary today. What'd you say, Amanda? I said, it's been 15 years ago. Thanks for the memories. I can't even thank my coach enough for all that she did for me in those moments. More gymnastics from Chicago. Sabrina Vega having a very nice day so far, moments ago on the vault. You see those numbers there, they differentiate the vault that she'll be doing, and it's much more difficult, adds a full twist, more than we saw from Chelsea Memo. Nice job. She takes home a 14.6. That actually starts almost a full point higher in start value than what we saw from Chelsea Memo or Bridget Coquato. And our leader at this point, Mackenzie Wofford. I tell you, what a little cutie, huh? And <laughs> you, you saw that age there. So she's 15 years old, and you heard me earlier say you have to be 16. Well, you have to be 16 in the year at some point in time. Well, and she looks so young out here. It made me think about, you know, 15 years ago when Dominique Mogiano was on the floor as a senior at 13 years old. This young lady has really held it together, although being the one of the youngest competitors out here. Really like her gymnastics, too. Very, very clean. Nice lines. Obviously doing a very nice job sitting atop the leaderboard. And actually one of her coaches, Tatiana Shalgakova, has had some very impressive gymnast under her belt. She choreographed Yelena Shushanova's Olympic floor routine in 1988. She was the all-around champion. Elena scored a perfect 10 on that, and an American name as well, the great Carly Patterson, gold medalist from 2004. So this should be very interesting choreography. flexibility one area she's going to want to work on is a little more power behind those passes great job pulling up to her feet but definitely needs a little more amplitude on those first two job. <laughs> yeah, as you said, Amanda, certainly she needs a little bit more power. And there, of course, her coach. Happy, job well done. You're always happy when you put it to your feet. Especially at 15. This is a, a new place for her in the senior division. And to be in this competition for the first time with names like Sean Johnson and Chelsea Memel, you question her ability to handle the pressure. But I'll tell you what, for 15, I'm very impressed. Looks a little bit like my partner here from 15 <laughs> years ago. That blonde hair, those chubby cheeks. <laughs> Don't worry, Amanda, it's only 15 years. I won my gold medal. I can't even tell you. <laughs> you, you lose track after 20. 
Hey, you know, I, I told you when I saw you for the first time, I actually started gymnastics in 1984. Thank so. you, thank you. <laughs> Let's move on. Sofina De Jesus, a gymnast from Sega. For many athletes, just making it to this level and having the opportunity to qualify on to the national championships is a, a very big goal and dream when it finally is a reality. She actually has a, an amazing past. She gave up gymnastics for a little bit, toured with Elton John for two years as a hip hop dancer and has had a role in a hip hop television show called Hip Hop Harry. <laughs> Gonna have to DVR that. Very smooth connection. It's a very common series we see amongst all the athletes because it has a lot of connection value. But what the judges are looking for is that smooth connection from one scale all the way through to the end. Just way too low on that front flip. Landed in a, a very deep squat. Well, I mentioned how difficult those blind landings are because you don't know your cricket until you hit the beam. And when you're that low, there's no time to save it. Certainly has enough power. I don't know, it's just, just something not right on it. A little bit under rotated on that dismount, but in today's world of gymnastics, I'll tell you a fall on any piece of apparatus, it is just devastating. One full point off. And Chelsea Memel, we will see more of her back in Chicago. We are back, our standings after three rotations in the book with that vault, Sabrina Vega moves to the top of the list. Chelsea Memel following behind, Mackenzie Wofford drops to third and Allie Reisman back on track after a couple of good routines there. Here is one of our veterans of this competition and literally of world gymnastics. And to speak of that, we have a nice little graphic here for you. We have our veterans and our newcomers, the three Olympians and the three hoping to get there. The average age for our Olympians, 21 years old. The newcomers, just 17 Olympic medals, of course, six on the veteran side and none for the newcomers. They haven't competed in the games yet, haven't been old enough. And world championship medals, 18 for Sean Chelsea and Alicia, and seven for our young kids. And here is one of them. This, of course, Allie Raceman, currently in fourth place. One rotation left. We will be back in Chicago with the final rotation of gymnastics. Welcome back to Chicago. Looking at nighttime at the fabulous Navy Pier. Second year in a row, CoverGirl Classic taking place in Chicago, Illinois. Second year for Alicia in this very building. She has only the vault remaining to go. Remember her comeback started here and actually it ended last year with a gold medal at the World Championships on this event. Her teammate, Ali Raceman, also will be finishing up on the vault. I tell you, Alicia, she just looks so composed and confident. What, what do you think? How, how, because you have to remember that her Olympic experience, the way it ended, it was it was it was painful. 
Well, you talked about the word. She even still says redemption is the word that motivates her day in and day out. But you know what? I think something new about her is she really described her relationship with her coach as a mutual respect. This is not about having to do assignments, having to do conditioning. Alicia is doing gymnastics and doing it the way that she needs to be great at that. And I think it's a completely different perspective when you're at this age knowing exactly what you need to do to be ready. And that trans, you know, transitions into confidence. And you can see that in her gymnastics at this event. Starts with a huge vault, handspring front, one and a half twist. Fantastic. You don't see too many gymnasts with that kind of speed and that kind of power. In fact, that would be why she is the best in the world on this event. Just huge air on this, generates all this power, turns her body over and watch, she will just jam that table, jump into the air, the only thing, that is what Alicia really needs to fix is that landing. She always has that little slide back. Now Alicia, she'll be doing two vaults. Almost all of the competitors only doing one vault. The reason she is doing two is at a major event like a world championships or an Olympic games, you first have to qualify for the event finals and you have to do two different vaults and they have to be what are called done from different families. So she ran down last time and jumped onto the board facing the horse. So that's a handspring family vault. She'll do what's called a Yurchenko vault. She'll do a round off or a half turn onto the board. So she'll actually be facing away from the table and that constitutes the two different families. And a nice easy vault from Alicia. You know, it's, it's like a carbon copy of last year. It's the exact same two vaults she did. She's capable of adding a full twist on that and actually even working to upgrade her first vault, which would be remarkable if she's able to pull that off. That's our first look at Anna Lee. And remember, it is not even remotely all about the all around here. It's about where people can contribute to Team USA. She has already graduated college, has a UCLA championship in her belt, wanted to come back, and she can contribute on the uneven bars. Oh, that was an amazing save. Watch this right here. Very difficult release skill. The USA. 2008 really lost the title because the Chinese were just so much stronger on the uneven bars and this is a place where the USA still is lacking a little bit so someone oh, oh. wow well, that's too bad she looks stunned obviously peeling through the bottom of a semi easy skill something she's done probably throughout her entire collegiate career. Well, I know she added a new element in this routine and really hasn't done the numbers with that exercise and it's just, it's exhausting. She did a pirouette right into the stall. You can see right at the bottom. You know, you mentioned the endurance of these routines. Obviously a lot of skills. Quite often on this event, endurance is in the forearms and you just lose your grip like that. I'd be willing to get, guess that she probably can't even remember the last time she did that. <laughs> I had an opportunity to watch Anna throughout her entire collegiate career, and she's one of the most consistent collegiate gymnasts I've ever seen. Mm. Her coach is Lee Yue Zhou. Not just her coach, but her dad. And this is, this is really a big test for Allie Raceman. You know, she started weak on the uneven bars and another area where Team USA can set itself apart from the rest of the world is on vault. They have the potential to do these vaults that are valued at a maximum of 16.5. Very few gymnasts in the world are capable of doing that. Ali is planning on doing that here today. Last year, she performed this same vault and it was uh, not a pretty picture. Here we go. 
There could be no doubt in the mind. Oh. And a good job. She puts it to her feet. And that is all that that man right there, Mihai, wanted to see. Just get it to your feet. She has to feel good about that after what happened last year. But in all honesty, she's capable of a much better two and a half twist. She is. She needed to get that one to her feet to really build her confidence more than anything. Getting some congratulations from Marta Caroli. You always want to impress her. What's so hard about this is she does not just two twists right there. She adds another half turn, puts it to her feet. Doesn't quite get that twist all the way around, but I'm sure these judges they're going to go ahead and give that to her. A big moment. That is a very big moment for Allie Raceman. Well, and to finish with that after the kind of start she had says a lot about the mental toughness of her. Annalise scored a 14.3 on the uneven bars with that fall. Our final look at Chelsea Memel. One of the few who are doing the all around here, the only Olympic veteran who's performing on all four events. And so far, this competition, this entire week for Chelsea Memel has gone exactly as planned. You know, for it being the first meet back, all four events, I tell you what, all week long, she has looked very calm. She says she can do all of the skills that she used to do. They're not all in her routine at this point. On balance beam, the score for Hallie Mossett on West Coast, 12.9. Needs a little bit more time. Now on balance beam. And she mentioned a lot of that was Trinity just Jay. getting back into that routine endurance shape. Great amplitude there. Trademark Chelsea Memo right here. Jam to a handstand. What a day. Chelsea Memo, you are back. More gymnastics when we return to Chicago. Chelsea Memo, a very good uneven bar routine, a nice score, 14.4, but a fantastic first day back to competition since Beijing, China. Welcome. This, our booth is Celebrity Central today. <laughs> we got Alicia Sacramoni here. How do you think today went? Today went well. I think uh, Classics is always a little bit rocky for some people just since the first big meet of the USA season. And uh, it's going pretty well. I, I'm not too shabby, I don't think. Yeah, you know, it's a, your comeback actually started a year ago in this very same building. What was the difference between today and that time? I think there was a little bit less pressure on me this year since I already been competing for a year. We're going to scoot over to the uneven bars for another all-around competitor, Sabrina Vega, on her last event, the uneven bars. Had a little bit of struggles in training on skills just like that, those handstand positions. A lot of the... Oh, oh. boy. You know, these bar routines are so difficult because of all the combination skills. If they don't hit right at the vertical line, it's very difficult to connect on top of the fact that it's obviously big deductions as well. I know a lot of girls are complaining because these are a new set of bars. They're a little bit bouncier, and I think they're harder to control all your skills and your swings and get your timing down. So I know a lot of girls had problems with the first few days. Mm. Especially on those kind of skills that have pirouettes, trying to finish right on top. Well, she stayed on the apparatus, but not the way she wanted to. A lot, lot of falls, though, Alicia. I'm telling not, you, I think not it's... Just vault, not just on bars, but... It's the first meet. I know it's a little bit rough, and people are going to be disappointed with not having the perfect outcome, but it's still early in the season. They are getting the kinks out. A lot of these girls have new routines, so I think this is their first time really competing them, and I think by visas, they'll be good to go. And speaking of new routines, your floor routine was outstanding. Obviously, Thank some landing you. mistakes, but it had to feel good to get back out there. First, first competitive routine since the Olympics, so <laughs> it was good to be on my feet. And I was glad that I, uh, no big mistakes, so that was good. No, it was great. <laughs> I, I just, I've told you, I absolutely love the music. So powerful. I, I, I can't wait, wait to see that done in a big arena with a huge crowd. 
I know, when it's really loud, you kind of get goosebumps when you hear the music, and it makes you enjoy doing the routine a little bit more. Well, great. We'll be looking at Mackenzie Coquato in her final event this evening. And remember, this is not only about the all-around. It's actually the all-around doesn't mean all that much at this CoverGirl Classic. It's where you can potentially help the U.S. team. We've seen a lot of falls on bars, and we know that uh, USA is weak. This is where she can contribute. Thank you, Alicia, for Thanks. stopping by our booth. Thanks for having as me. As always. It was always fun, as always. And great job today. Thank you. Yeah, fun oh, to great. watch. Sabrina Vega, 13.75 on the uneven bars. On uneven bars, the score for Sabrina Vega of Dynamic, 13.5. Now on uneven bars for Legacy Elite, McKenzie. Actually, we have a score change there, a 13.5 for Sabrina on the uneven bars. As McKenzie waits, and you know, this is actually the routine. She's, she's a good, solid, all-around gymnast, but she made the 2010 routine team and earned that silver medal at the Worlds primarily because of uneven bars. She's a great bar worker, super clean. She looks a little nervous because in the warm-up, she struggled with her release moves. There's Solid there. <laughs> that one right there, huge. Keeping the legs together requires a lot more distance, which means a lot more risk in catching that bar. Nice transition from one bar to the other. Wow, that was great. Looked like it could have been a disaster for a moment, but she held on. Another release. Just when you think the routine's done, it yeah. keeps going. It's exhausting. Hold on to the bar. Great exercise for Mackenzie Coquato. The freshman Gator. Came back home to train at Legacy Elite, just down the road. One of the most solid routines we have seen today on any event. Well, and it was packed with skills. Almost every skill she did had great amplitude, but most importantly, what they look for on that event are those beautiful lines hitting dead straight in the handstand. And how about her, Chelsea Memo, what a day. Next on bars, our second look from Jordan Weber. You see that 15.2. I believe that that ties her for the highest score on that event. Only doing two events here. Certainly capable of doing the all around at this point, just not in the plan. Her coach and I had a long discussion about Jordan. You know, it's, it's she's already just about where she needs to be in 2012 at the Olympic Games. And it's, you know, it's this balancing act. Make sure you don't do too much. You gotta stay in shape, but you gotta also avoid the injuries. He said he has been a student of the sport. He has studied it and he's watched others run out of gas. He is determined not to let that happen to his star pupil, Jordan. And this is a new routine for Jordan as well. Very tricky combination right here. This into a pirouetting skill. Nicely done. I watched her struggle with that. She does have a cover up when she doesn't make it, but we talk about the confidence of this young lady and she seems to get the job done when it counts. Has added a, a big dismount. Double twisting, double somersault, two flips, two twists. Gets the ground. Great exercise, John Gettard. He says you are only as good as your last competition, and then the moment it's over, it's all about the next one. It just never stops. She looks great. We will be back to wrap things up at the UIC Pavilion on the campus of Chicago, Illinois.
The 2011 CoverGirl Classic is brought to you by Subway Restaurants, the new Subway $3 flatbread breakfast combo, a six-inch flatbread sandwich, and a cup of coffee. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. And our final performer here, Bridget Coquato on the uneven bars. Her sister just knocked it out of the park. Let's see how she can deal with the pressure here. Also a very good bar worker. I'll tell you, Legacy, they have three excellent bar workers. Little bit of a problem there and another correction. Very difficult release skill. Covered very well though. Dismount double layout, a nice landing and tough kid. She is from right up the road. The fans and teammates love what they saw. And we have our Amanda Borden on the floor with Chelsea Memble. Chelsea, you have toyed with this comeback for quite some time. You have to feel great about this decision. Um, I do, especially now that the meet is over. Um, I feel confident with what I did, and I can only improve from here. Well, you've always been known as a fierce competitor, but it's almost like you didn't even miss a beat. That had to be even more of a confidence booster for you. It, it was a confidence booster to come out and know that I can hit all four, but I have never been more nervous, I, I think, for this competition. You know, I not at the Olympics, I was nervous, but I was so much more prepared, so this time I was just like, oh my gosh, this is the worst feeling ever, but then you just kind of salute and, you know, just the competitive person in you takes over. Well, it definitely did not show. What are you going to be doing between now and Visa Championships? Work, work, work. I'm going to work on everything, clean up everything, and get my full difficulty back on bars. Well, congratulations. You looked great. Thank you. Tim? Well, I'll tell you, she certainly did, and as did Jordan Weber. Only two events tonight, but capable of so much more. Maybe the best performance this evening came from this young lady right here, Alicia Sacramoni. A fantastic job, three events, and each one just as good as the other. But for our fresh take from Subway, let's take a look once again at Chelsea Memel's bars. Really the culmination of her entire day here, and Amanda, you made it back up to the booth. Really amazing how well she dealt with the pressure and she says, you know, not as prepared as she wanted to be. Great it didn't job. show, that is for sure. You know, I mentioned this particular competition so early in the season, every athlete feels like that, but what has made Chelsea so great is preparation. So that's where she talks about getting back to the gym and although very, very good performance, cleaning it all up, adding that difficulty back in. Without question, Chelsea Mebel. A great routine in our subway, fresh take. I'd have to say that she is probably the biggest surprise of this competition. Our standings, Allie Raceman races to the lead there after a very weak start, and Chelsea Mebel almost catches her there. In the end, Sabrina Vega, Mackenzie Wofford in fourth position. What about Sean? What, what do you think she is thinking at this point? Is, is it all just preparation now till the next competition, the national championships? Well, the Sean Johnson we all know is a competitor. She is ready to hit the gym and get back to where she knows she needs to be. I have no doubt in my mind that skill-wise, I think she's right where she needs to be. Mentally is where she needs to pick up momentum. And I only can really come from hard work and training in the gym. And I'll tell you, we're getting a shot of just about all of the major players right now. Sean Johnson, Sabrina Vega, of course, Alicia, who had a phenomenal day here at these CoverGirl Classic. She's just so glad to be done. You can see it, you know, that big sigh. Her teammate walking away, Allie Raceman. But how about Chelsea Memo? Wow, I just, I can't get over it. 
You know, it's so impressive to see these girls make comebacks. And like we mentioned earlier in the show, that is never an easy thing to do in this sport. However, to be up against some of these young greats who are always pushing the level of difficulty and still get the job done says a lot about what these athletes are made of. They're tough, they're disciplined, they're dedicated, and it is very apparent they're motivated and on a mission to London. No fanfare. And what a night it has been in Chicago, Illinois, and what a year we have in store for you. For Amanda Borden, I am Tim Daggett. In the quest for Olympics, you see it right there. This has been the 2011 CoverGirl Classic from Chicago, Illinois.